Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? I'm having that I forgot something, but I don't know what it is that I forgot anxiety. You ever, you ever get that? Because normally when, when, when I'm setting up the podcast and there's moments before we hit record, it's like there's always something I forget. Um, but I actually remembered everything this time and it's driving me nuts because I'm really used to forgetting something, then remembering it and then being like, oh, why don't I ever remember that thing? But it looks like I actually remembered all the things. Mm hmm. And I'm, I'm missing forgetting. The one thing I forgot to do is to forget something. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you left the oven on. I did not. I don't think I ever, I don't think I turned the oven on today. I, I may have left maybe the burner on, but that, that would be it. All right, Kyle, let's, let's get into things. Um, I, I know we have them in the notes in a certain order, but I have a feeling that one of these is going to be what's in the thumbnail. And I, and I hear good podcasting, especially on the YouTube uh, side of things, is, is giving people the click right away. Yeah. So, so, so since I think this is what's going to be in the thumbnail, I think we should probably start with this instead of burying it deeper into the podcast. So, uh, first off, this is uh, Ask Sloopcast. This is where we answer questions provided um, casual carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, pretty much. Um, provided typically by the fan base, but uh, fan base of the podcast uh, through our Discord channel, discord.thesloopcast.com. What uh, this one I actually stole from Reddit. I stole this one from r slash uh, college football CFB, uh, and I modified it to be Ohio State specific because it was not Ohio State specific, uh, obviously on CFB. But um, here's the question that uh, I mo this is what I have modified it into. You get one do over game in the Meyer Day era. What game do you choose? Yeah, there's a total of 15 games. Yeah, I say it's only lost 15 times since 2012. <laughs> that's one. That's excellent. Can we can we yes. just say that? Um, Zach immediately comes in with Iowa 2017. I would certainly like a do over on that game. So I mean, the rule here is just is just what it is. It's you, you essentially just get to hit the reset button on a, on a single game. Um, yeah, I had to, I had to write you still them have all the down. Same, you, you still have to, you know, you can't like give yourself an injured player back. You can't do anything like that. Um, it's just, you start from kickoff over again. You don't get any yeah, forewarning. It, like you, you don't get to like retain memories. All right. We also we now have Michigan State Buckeye or a Big Ten championship game 2013 in the chat. We have Michigan from from 2022, which makes a lot of sense. Virginia Tech in 2014. I don't want that one back. That that season ended fine. Exactly. Yeah. So as I hey, was Austin. writing them down, because I had to think like, OK, what are the losses that Ohio State's had since 2012? And then just writing through, uh, so somebody said the Big Ten Championship game of Michigan State. Okay, all right, yeah. I can, I can, I can get Urban's behind first that loss one. at Ohio State. Yep. Um, Austin, you could look at, the question is: You get one do-over game in the Meyer Day era. What game do you choose? Yep. Uh, so some other ones here. I mean, you could, you could. Any, look, back the the, look, look back at the Georgia Georgia game that just happened here. Sure. How, how, how sweet would have that been to uh, be able to pull that win and then potentially a a national title there? Uh, uh, we get here's our here's our Purdue 2018. Uh, yeah. Certainly, I don't want to do over of Ohio State Georgia. I think we got our best case, and I I totally disagree. Um, but I'm yeah. not going. I think there's a there's a question later. Uh, there's another question later that will I think I'll address that on. So I don't want to I don't want to give that away yet. 
Mm-hmm. So in my in my mind, Jared, I think the two is Georgia probably... wins eight out of ten times. Hard disagree. Um, Georgia maybe wins six times. I think those are two incredibly even football teams, and I think it played out like that. So I think the two games that come to my mind, Jared, is the, I think the Purdue game, but I think my number one choice would be 2015 versus Sparty. I that 100% agree. That 2015 year, that was supposed to be like the best Buckeye team and no one was touching them. Great defense, great offense. It was Bucked had to make it to be to be a very very special year, and they laid a fat goose egg. It was against also Sparty. It was one of those years where getting into the playoffs was was tough. Yep. There there have been there have been years in the college football playoff era where. You know, you just kind of there was just kind of a third and a fourth or a third or a fourth team that just sort of got in there because it was really a two team race. Um, I don't think that's the case here. I do not think that's the case here. I I, I think uh, that or I know that wasn't the case there. Like, I think that was a uh, incredibly difficult year to make it into the, the playoff. Ohio State lost one game on a last second field goal to a team that also got put into the playoffs. Now Sparty got slaughtered in the playoffs. Sure. But Sparty got put in the playoffs that year. Just feed Zeke and you win a hundred percent, Zach, 100%. Yeah, Sparty did lose. I, yeah, it was 28, nothing. Um, so I think that was a team that uh, one, you can say, you know, they slept, walk through that season, I think that was a phrase Kyle and I used a lot that year was sleepwalking. Um, but, you know, they could have put it together at the end. I think they would have put it together at the end. Um, but again, it was just one of those years where getting into the playoffs was exceptionally hard for some reason. Uh, it, there were just four teams that were more qualified. And that Michigan State, Ohio State game turned out to be a play in game to the playoffs. And with the exceptional amount of talent on that, that's a damn disappointing thing. And and that's what happens when you have a pretty bad out of conference schedule too. you Didn't play know. Hawaii, Northern Illinois, Western Michigan, and then a, a Virginia tech team that was not that good that year. It's very, I'm, I am so trained on the big 10, nine game schedule. If all, it already feels weird to hear four out of conference games. Mm hmm. All right. Um, but yeah, if, if your answer is like Purdue or Iowa, just because of the soul crushing ways in which those games happened, I feel it. Um, if your answer is either of the two most recent Michigan games, because just, just because it's Michigan, I feel it. Um, the Bama game. It's for a national title, so I understand the temptation, but like you, you still have to play that game on the parameters that that game was, which is that your players got no practice time because they all caught COVID from Clemson. Like, and Bama was still really good. And it, it, it just like, I, I don't feel like the only way I want, the only way I want to redo on 2020 Ohio state Bama is if they delay the game for another week or two. So Ohio state can get some actual practices in, but that's, that's not the, uh, that's not the premise of the question. All right. Um, Kyle, I, I think that's, I think we're good on that one. I would like to redo 2016 Clemson because I was there and it sucked. Honestly, that's <laughs> fair. That's honestly totally a, a fair way to say that. I think I was there and it sucked is a perfectly good reason. Yep. What if JT uh, was, was 2016. No, uh, 2013 was the game where, yeah, never mind. Um, 
I, I maintain Ohio State beats Clemson in 2013 um, should everyone stay healthy. All right, uh, Kyle, what, what question you want to do next? Oh, uh, let's see here. I guess we'll start from the top here, Jared. We talked a lot of, uh, last week about the projections for next year, but what about this year, Jared? Buckeyes have a, they are over the 85 scholarship limit right now. So a question from Austin here, how many scholarships are the Buckeyes currently at? Potentially, what are the ideal numbers to get to 85? So one, and I I know Austin isn't asking this question. Okay, I know he's not asking this question, but we're like, we're not going to cut anybody. (laughs) We're not we're not doing that. Um, I know you aren't, Austin. Um, So currently, Ohio State, once once all of the freshmen join right now, they're under 85. But once all of the freshmen join, they'll be at 86, except they're except that they've brought on Josh Simmons and Zoe Styles, which puts them up to 88. And Tywin Malone is still out there. Um, Kyle, are there any crystal balls on that on on on, on his recruitment at the moment? Which one? Um, uh, Tywin Malone, who's in the transfer portal, That's defensive good. tackle from Ole Miss, um, that puts them at 89. If Malone or some there are not, Austin apparently beat you to it. Um, Tywin Malone uh, would take them or anyone else if there's maybe another someone else out there who they end up getting out of the transfer portal. That takes them up to 89. So that is four over. Um, I, I know a lot of people ask this question, so I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll say it. Um, they have to be at 85 when fall camp starts. That's that's sort of, that's that line. It's what happens? Fun. What happens if they don't? With what happens if they aren't? They will be. <laughs> they will be. <laughs> they will be. Um, expect some grad transfers. Yes, that's another important point. Yes. The portal window is closed. No, there is not a, another opening of the transfer portal window between now and fall camp. There are two portal openings. It's open for two-ish weeks at the end of April. Uh, 15 days at the end of April. And it's open for 45 days. I believe it opens like on the day all of the bowls are announced. And then it's open for 45 days after that. Those are your two portal openings. Um, That being said, graduate transfers are not subject to the portal opening. So if you're graduated and you're doing that, that trickery of, oh, no, the other university offers a. A, uh, A master's program that my current university doesn't have. Oh, no. If if you're doing that whole dance, you're not subject to the transfer portal. Um, You could you could have players medically retire, which is I'm not no names, but a a possibility for at least a couple players on the roster. Um, So there and, and, you know, there are certainly a number of players who are will have completed their their degrees. Um, I know a bunch of players just walked today as we're recording this on Sunday. Um, again, we're not getting into names, but and by the way, Justin Fields also completed his degree today. Yeah, just that's cool. Didn't even wait to re- retire from the NFL. Just went back and did it. Um, so, yeah, there, there are certainly um, graduate transfers, medical retirements, uh, other other ways that this will happen one way or another. Yep. Um, again, no names, no names, but uh, they essentially, if, if we just say Tywin Malone or someone, we'll just say Tywin Malone or someone, uh, they need to be minus four players between now and then. 
Yep. And just like Jared said, Ohio State will get there. Yeah, they'll get there. It'll, it'll, it'll get, they'll get there by the time fall camp starts. Is that including recent transfers out the 89? Yes. Yeah. Let me double check the chart. I, I just pulled the chart from 11 Warriors today. Yeah. Um, neither of the wide receivers are on this on this list that the, who transferred right at the last second. Yep. I'm looking for what ifs here. Uh, Got to expect maybe one more wide receiver. Um, the only way that happens is if X grad transfers. Um, I don't think Fleming finished. His, I don't know if I don't know if Fleming has, has finished his degree yet or not. If we're and I don't see anyone, so those would be the only guys old enough for a grad mm-hmm. transfer. And I don't see anyone on the list who would even semi qualify for medical retirement. Um, he didn't graduate today. I mean, he could in theory graduate um, after the summer semester. I think I, I don't. But again, I, I have I have no idea what. I don't want to I don't want to talk about anyone. One, I don't want to talk about anyone specifically. And two, I don't want to talk about um, people's college degrees and where they currently sit. Because I just I don't know. It feels like a line that I don't want to cross. Um, but yeah. There are certainly some offensive, but you did say uh, maybe another offensive lineman. There are certainly um, a number of offensive linemen who are are old enough. That comma is very not correct. Uh, what did I say? Um, oh, oh, uh, Zach. Okay. So yeah, that's essentially minus three or minus four players. And um, it's the path just looking here and about who could be eligible. I, I don't think not everything's about you, Jared. That's. That's a lie and you know it. <laughs> um, and furthermore, like you, you could also see maybe one of the f- freshmen coming in gray shirt. I don't think that's ideal. I don't think you want that, but it's a possibility. Um, but again, no names, no, no names specifically. All right. Next question here, Jared. Did the draft hurt or help the Buckeyes in recruiting differences in offense and defense? Um, in some, a- so I would say in some aspects, it certainly helped. Um, Ohio state has their first offensive tackle picked in, uh, in the first round since I believe Decker, uh, in 2015, I know, you know, that's where Ohio state's been struggling to recruit the most. Um, so to say, Hey, look, we had an offensive tackle picked in the top 10. That could be you. I mean, truth of the matter is the Paris Johnson jr. Showed up as a first round draft pick. Like if, if Paris on jr. If Paris Johnson jr. Doesn't, uh, doesn't get picked in the, in the first round, that's just a straight up failure on your part as a coaching staff. Um, it's when it comes to the quarter. So you also have, um, Stroud and, uh, JSN picked in the first round. And my, my take on that is I don't know how you get better in those areas as far as like, I feel like day is already, labeled quarterback whisperer and Brian Hartline doesn't need any help. If anything, they need to nerf Brian Hartline and his recruiting. Um, no, Jared, they don't. <laughs> he no, needs don't, nerfed. Jared. Kyle, he needs no, he nerfed. Doesn't. He's an unfair advantage. He's a cheat code. Jared, what is a nerf? Uh, that, that's a, that's a term used in video gaming for when, just trying to help your older audience. That's fair. It's a term used in video gaming when um, a maybe a weapon or a character in a video game is too powerful to the point where it's unfair. So like in the next update of the game, they nerf it, which essentially means to make it weaker, to make it less effective. 
Um, and it, 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 and as Kyle uh, points out in the gif he put down in the chat, it, it is in reference to like Nerf guns. Because, you know, it's you get rid of a bullet and you substitute it with a piece of foam, you make it weaker. That that is that is where uh, that expression comes from. But to answer the answer the question, though. I, th- I don't think it hurt or helped. To be honest, I mean, you can I look think at it the first offensive it, line recruiting, but that's about it. Yeah, I mean, you look at the first round. Yeah, three, three players picked in the first round. There, the second quarterback, the first offensive lineman, the first wide receiver off of the board. There, that, that looks great on paper. Definitely looks great. I mean, that's kind of where it stopped there. Um, you had uh, uh, Zach Harrison in the third round, Don Jones. Zach Don Harrison Jones going in the third down doesn't to the, to the hurt round or uh, fourth round and then Whipler round six there. But you but I you could say, oh, Dwan quote unquote fell. He was considered maybe potentially a late first round pick. He falls all the way to the fourth. Um I have not gotten solid. I've heard a lot of rumor and whatnot, but I've not received a solid answer as to why that happened. Um Whipler, I don't, I don't know why Whipler left. Whip, 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 Whipler shouldn't have left. And I, I, all I will tell you about that, I thought it was wait for Dwan. That I, I don't doubt that that was part of it. But I disagree with Luke. Well, I'm gonna tell you this, Ganglin. The people at the Woody were surprised he he left. Oh, you said you agree. I don't know why I misread that. Uh, yeah, the yeah, no. It, I'll, all I will tell you is that the is that the coaching staff was surprised he left. That, that's that's what I'll tell you in regards to that situation. I think he got some yeah. bad advice. Um, now, where you could certainly make the case that Ohio State hurt or was hurt, two defensive backs, two defensive tackles go undrafted. Um. Hickman, I, I think, is a pretty big disappointment, as is I, I think both the defensive tackles, too. Those were somewhat highly recruited guys. Um, but I think if you're Ohio State, you can say. Yeah, but wait, wait till next year. W- wait till you see where. You know, wait till you see where Hall goes next year you know you you can sort of if a defensive tackle is like oh man neither of you guys got drafted when was the last time you had a defensive tackle drafted high but you know you could point to some guys in the nfl i think there's at least two or three defensive tackles playing well in the nfl right now former buckeyes um zach harrison you could make the arc he's a five star he doesn't get picked until the third round but you can just say bosa bosa young you know what i mean like you you have plenty of legacy to fall back on there. Um, so I don't think that hurts. Again, defensive tackle, you can just say, look, Mike Hall's being projected as a top 15 pick right now. And 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 that can uh Cam Hayward technically a defensive end, although that he's a defensive end in a three four, so it's kind of a tweener. Um so when when you look at the defensive backs, again, you can just say, wait till you see where our defensive backs go next year's draft. And you can just sort of point at projections and 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 hopefully hold some of that criticism from potential recruits off. Mm-hmm. But but having Paris Johnson picked in the top ten, I, I think, you know, we, we talked about it last week during the recruiting um during our recruiting episode. Ohio State needs to go get a big out of state offensive tackle to add to the class. It would, and it's Ohio State's biggest failure right now or in the past few years in regards to recruiting has been the offensive line. So to be able to point at Paris Johnson and say, look, look, I think is, is a huge win for Ohio State. 
is the most important thing, good or bad, the most significant thing, good or bad, to happen in the draft for Ohio State was having Dwa- or excuse me, was having Paris picked in the top ten. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, next question here, Jared. Uh, look, looks like you have another question that you stole from Reddit here. <laughs> uh, here's here's an interesting one that uh, I think some Buckeye fans will have a hard time talking about or wanting to admit. Well, that's literally the question, though. <laughs> yeah. What's a hard truth Ohio State fans need to accept? What is a hard truth that Ohio State fans need to accept? Um, hard truth for Ohio State fans to accept is that the the beginning of this century in regards to Ohio State football and Michigan is such a huge anomaly and you can't expect going 19 and 1 against Michigan in 20 years to be the norm. That's that that is the hard truth that I need Ohio State fans to to accept. 19 wins in 20 games against Michigan is not and will not be the norm. And you're going to lose some of those games. Uh, Gangland says we've not accomplished our goals these past two seasons. I I think I think Ohio State fans would agree with that. And mm-hmm. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a hard truth for Ohio State fans. I, I think most people would agree with that, although it's a hard truth to acknowledge losing to Michigan. But. I think the harder truth is that this is the norm, not not two losses in a row is the norm, but averaging those two losses into the last 20 years, it's still way above what the norm is going to be. Yeah, you you can't you can't have I guess it was two losses in 20 years, one one for Trestle. And one in the lost in the lost season for Luke Fickle. Um but my point remains the same. The you can't you, you can't have that be the expectation as much as you want it to be the expectation. Kyle, hard pill for Ohio State fans to accept. Hard truth, tough pill to swallow. Those are the two things I mixed together there. Anyone else with a down in the chat? Hard truth for Ohio State fans. Yeah, do do I want to show my face again? <laughs> what are you gonna? Why? What are you gonna say? Man, I'm, I'm probably gonna probably gonna hear it here. I just told people they need to accept they're gonna lose to Michigan more often. Is could it possibly be worse than that? Is it yeah. worse than that? Maybe not, but. You see, here's the problem, Uh, Kyle. Here's the problem. I'm used to catching hate. (laughs) And 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 you're too you're too enraptured with being the good one. Ohio State isn't and will never be Alabama. That's that's tough. When you say what, when you say Alabama, Alabama is not even Alabama anymore. See, that's, that's what, what, what does, what does Alabama mean to you? Like I, I, I tried my best to put like numbers on it, right? Like what 10 year, like a 10 year, 15 year dominant streak. Is that, let's see. Um, I'm going to do a quick uh, Bama under Saban. Bama just went on their Miami type run, but no, but a lot. Lo- Miami's run well, was what? Four, four years, years something like that. Five yeah. years. Bama's running on 16, 17 years now. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get a quick synopsis here. Here we go. Head coaching record, 2017 to 2022. Um, First year, nothing great. Um, 
national championships. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six national titles. So you're averaging a national title less than one out of every three years. Less than every three years, you're getting one. And Ohio State has had two um, in the last... And in that this, time span, Ohio State yeah. has had one. Yeah, in that time span, yeah, one. But in the turn of the century, two. two. You're talking about one every 10 years versus one every three years, essentially. And then you look, and then you look at other teams that have won a couple of them as well, too, who haven't been as dominant year in and year out, too. But they somehow were able to get a few in here like LSU. Um, I can think of where they've had some really bad years, but then how many won how many national two. titles LSU had in this century? Two. They've had two. Okay. They've had two. Same same as Ohio State. Uh, only Bama is Bama. Only Bama is Bama. I mean when you're talking about that sort of because this also isn't like Bama's first run at this either. They are historically they're they're they are like the pinnacle of historic and recent success. Because like, you know, Georgia just won two in a row, obviously, I, but they hadn't won one since like 81 before that. LSU's had three since the turn of the century. Three. Excellent. But you know what? LSU's also had some major dog shit seasons in that time frame, too. Major dog shit seat. Ohio State has been consistent. Alabama's been consistent in this time frame as well. Um, the difference is that Alabama is able to finish, though, and finish the, uh, the run. But, but, only Bama's Bama. You're definitely in that next tier. Because like you could say LSU has one more title than Ohio State. But they've also had totally dog shit years, whereas Ohio State has had one bad year since the year 2000, like definitively bad year. In, in the trestle fickle day <laughs> Meyer era. They've only had like one and a half truly bad seasons. And I, who, who could you say that about other than Ohio state without like going over a bunch of teams results from the past 23 years? which I'm not going to do like Oklahoma is a team that for me feels like they're successful every year. Um, and by successful, I mean nine wins. Like if, if we try and draw like an actual, you know, eight, nine wins as far as like just not being dog shit. <laughs> if, if that's the line, you know, you can be a little bit down, but who else since the turn of the century has been consistently good year in and year out like Ohio State has been? I mean, other than Bam, Bam is out of the conversation. Bam is league of their own. If you put together, you know, teams of the 21st century, S tier is Bama and it's just Bama. Or like their S plus tier. Who else? Ohio State is definitely in the next tier down with a bunch of other teams. If you combine two factors of finishing, you know, just just say national titles and consistency. Since when when was this? 
When was this? This was Florida has national titles, but they've had some dog shit seasons post Urban Meyer. Georgia has always felt very consistently good, although I, I don't I'm not going to swear to that. Some is an understatement. Yeah, I yeah, totally. Miami had a great start to the century, although some of that was in the 90s. But even if we give them that, they've also had some dog shit years. Georgia, to me, I, I feel like Georgia has been pretty consistently good. They only finished, you know, they only got the national titles recently. Um, Auburn has a national title, but some real dog shit seasons. Oklahoma, did Oklahoma got got theirs in 2000, right? 2000, 2001. So technically 2000. they 2000, so they they do have a national title in this century. Um so and they've also been very consistently good this century, so you could talk about that. Didn't they get one in 2005? Oklahoma? No. No. That was that was the USC Texas game. You're you're confusing him with Texas, I think, maybe. Um, Texas has been, you know, they got theirs in 2005, but that's the only one they got. They haven't even been close to going back since. And, like, I know losing national title games sucks, obviously. But Ohio, you, you, we also have to acknowledge that Ohio State's been to three additional national title games. Ohio State's one of very few teams... Go look at how many teams have college football playoff wins. It is not many. Especially like if we look outside, you want a tough pill to swallow. We have to look outside of the SEC because they have just legitimately been the most dominant conference this century. That if that I don't some Ohio State fans are going to hear that and that's a tough pill to swallow for them. But guys, the numbers are the numbers. I don't know what to tell you. Um. There's another tough pill to swallow for Ohio State fans. Um, who who outside of the SEC has playoff wins? Ohio State, well, TCU, Oregon, LSU. I said outside of the SEC. Uh, outside. Uh, let's see. Yep. I think I named them. TCU. Oregon and oh Clemson, of course. I sometimes I forget Clemson's not in the SEC. Um, they feel like a very SEC program. Yep, yep. Um, TCU, Clemson, uh, and uh, Oregon. Oregon. Yeah, just four teams. And how many of them have multiple playoff wins? I'll, you don't have to look that one up. I'll I'll just tell you it's Ohio State. Ohio State's the only team outside of the SEC to have multiple playoff wins. Uh, Clemson. Damn it, Clemson again. I keep forgetting about Clemson. Clemson's about to go down the shitter too. Not that yeah. they've been overly consistent for like, but they're about to go down the shitter too. But still, I, I think belongs in that S tier. You know, again, combining consistency with national titles, there's Clemson still going to be in that S tier for sure. Um, but Alabama is an S plus and they're all by themselves. So to say Ohio State will never be Bama is accurate, but will anyone ever be Bama again with the playoff expansion with modern college football being modern college football and talent going to be spread around a little bit more potentially. Will anyone ever be Alabama again? I don't know. All right, let's, let's move on to the next question then. Uh, what is one play you would change the outcome of from the past season? I don't think Austin's in the room anymore. But he was talking about Georgia. The one play I yeah. went back is the one where Marvin yeah. Harrison Jr. got hurt. That's a, that's exactly where my 
my mind went as well. I, this is why I so adamantly disagree with his assessment that Ohio State would have lost or that Georgia would have won that game eight out of ten times. No, Ohio State wins that game if Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't get hurt. I I, I 100% believe that. 100%. That, that, that if you have Marvin Harrison Jr., even for that, even for just that last drive, they're getting a touchdown. They don't they're or they're getting at least much closer for that field goal. Even if Marvin Harrison Jr. gets hurt on that play, but then miraculously comes back and plays in that final in that final drive, Ohio Ohio State wins the game. Ohio State wins that football game. That's the one play I want back. I, that's just I, I gangland asked that question and it just clicked in my head immediately to better trainers have ethics. Yeah. We need to go get some of those Miami dolphin trainers. <laughs> Come on Tua, we'll put some tape on it. You're gonna put some yeah. tape on my brain. No, just on you your can... helmet. You'll be fine. Uh, from gangland here. Also, Uh, If you could permanently eliminate one team from the CFB forever, who would it be? (laughs) There's going to be an easy answer to this, which is Michigan, but then who would we hate? Then who would we hate? You know what I'm saying? One team from all of college football to remove. I mean, the other easy answer is to say Bama. Like, hey, Bama, leave some for the rest of us, would you? (laughs) Kyle throws a throws our crying Dabo emote in the chat. Um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't mind getting rid of Clemson. Never forget that Clemson was was founded by a Confederate soldier, a member of the Confederacy. Um, still have many buildings on their campus named after Confederates. If it's large enough, you can get rid of Auburn and Bama. Oh, oh, I I, I missed the first part of that sentence. (laughs) (laughs) All right, moving on. Um, Odin here uh, asks, what's the best store to ever come from Ohio? Could be a grocery store to a restaurant. So I went. I mean, there's there's a lot. There's a lot of big corporations in Ohio. So (laughs) I went and I did a. I did I did some pre pre research on this one. Now, Kyle, I couldn't I couldn't find a decent list that was like founded in Ohio, which I think is technically I think would be the the correct way to answer this. The only list I found were ones currently headquartered in Ohio, um, which I think maybe skews this list a bit. Um but uh Macy's is on the list. Kroger, of course, on the list. Um, Sherwin Williams, the paint company on the list. Um, Pampers isn't really a store, but they're on the list. Um, Victoria's Secret's a store for now. Um, <laughs> for now. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not doing well. Uh actual stores on the list so there's a lot of there's a a lot of this is procter and gamble offshoots if we're being honest like tide i think is a procter gamble offshoot if i'm not mistaken um marathon petroleum is apparently based in finley ohio that's where they're headquartered kyle did you know this you're from up that way yep i did know that you're right well about the procter and gamble offshoots is that what you're saying? I'm right about um, pretty much everything comes from Procter and Gamble in the Cincinnati area, for sure. Um, do do not forget uh, about Goodyear. And that's a good brand. Like if we're just talking brands, that's a good brand. The Goodyear blimp, the Goodyear tires. Um, Absolutely. That's it. That's I mean, if we're just talking like brands, that's a good brand, although not a store. I think he said like stores and restaurants. So I don't know if it technically is the answer to his question. Big Lots is headquartered in Columbus. I'm not I'm not owning that one, though. You'd think they come from Arizona. Uh, Goodyear. Why? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I, I knew you meant Goodyear, but but why? <laughs> 
I, th- I thought it'd be on this list, but I guess not. Uh, nationwide. Nationwide Insurance. Uh, I know I saw headquarters progressives in- on here as well. well. I'm honestly not sure. So these are billion dollar brands, not billion dollar corporations because no, notice that like um cardinal is not on this list i don't know what brand i don't know what they technically meant by brands um but but yeah if we do focus on restaurants which i think was part of the question i went and i collected some restaurants um gangland already points out uh donato's and white castle white castle is currently headquartered in columbus although um, was was founded in California, I believe. Um, Kyle, why do I feel like you knew that was out there? Like that wasn't random, <laughs> I didn't. right? I didn't. <laughs> Bob Evans, um, a Columbus company, although they're out of the restaurant game, aren't they? Aren't they just focusing on packaged foods now? Um, Arby's apparently out of out of Ohio. Uh, I think maybe that's because Wendy's bought them. I don't think they're originally from Ohio. Um, no. Are there any Bob Evans still open? I know the one near me closed. Oh, the Bob Evans thing. Yeah, that that's what I that's what I thought we were talking about. Um, Donato's Pizza. Um, Rusty Bucket, which I don't know if anyone out, I don't know how far that is outside of Ohio. Skyline Chili is, is a thing that I know, uh, people including me are very opinionated on one way or the other. I won't say which way for me. Rusty Bucket is mid. I agree. It just, it's just there. If someone said, Hey, let's go to Rusty Bucket. I'd be like, okay, but we have better options. Dixie better than Skyline. Hmm. I thought maybe you would have been a gold star guy. I don't know what that means. I just know that's another one of those. I, I, I honestly, I, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't care. Schmitz. Although that's not, is, is, is the Schmitz that they have, they have packaged foods that go outside of Ohio. I don't think they have any restaurant locations outside of Columbus, but they might have packaged foods. Oh, Schmitz is the best. Y'all, if you're ever in the German village, go to Schmitz. Um, you probably don't need me to tell you that. I feel like everyone, I feel like it's basically like an institution in the German village in Columbus at this point. Um, yeah, if you're if you're in Columbus for at, at least one night, Schmitz, go to Schmitz. Yeah. And by the way, if you're just at like a Columbus event, they typically will have some sort of food truck or or a booth or something set up. Um you should definitely get a Bahama Mama if they're there and you can get a cream puff there. But I'm telling you right now, the cream puffs at the events are not nearly as good as the cream puffs you get act- at the actual restaurant. I'm just letting you know right now they're good. I will still buy it. Don't don't get me wrong. I will still 100 percent buy the cream puff from the the giant like head sized cream puff. I'll still buy it from the truck. Don't get me wrong, but they're so much better actually at the restaurant. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings um, eh, started in Columbus. Skip it. skip it. They're from Ohio and they're successful. They're, how, 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 yeah, uh, whatever. Um, uh, you can do better. You can do better yes. than, than Buffalo. I mean, if you're in, if you're actually in Columbus, go to Roosters or Winking yeah. Lizard instead for sure. What happened to Damon's? Um, what happens to a lot of restaurants? They're very successful. They try to take that success and branch off into a bunch of locations. They get themselves into a bunch of debt. And in order to pay off that debt, they end up, they start cutting back on the quality of their food. And then everyone stops going. The same thing that happened to Max and Irma's another Columbus institution that no longer exists. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they get really aggressive in expansion and it kills them in the end. Favorite Damon's was in Portsmouth. Portsmouth, the original home of the Detroit lions. 
fun fact about Portsmouth. Um, there's a Max and Irma's at the Atlanta airport. You're right. There is one there. I remember seeing that. That is so weird. That is very weird. And a Roy Rogers, apparently. I don't have any opinions on that. <laughs> All right, Kyle, we're nearing the end of the show. Oh, uh, let me see if there was any other. Roy Rogers was, was born in Ohio, here. you're saying? Uh, we do have one. Gangland asks, would you, ra would you rather have to kill 10 100-year-olds or 100 10-year-olds? And I don't know why this was important, um, but I decided to look this up. The average 10 year old boy is 68 pounds and four foot five. I don't know why that was important, but I decided to put it in the show notes. Um, the answer to that is very clear. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know where they're like. You obviously kill 10, 100 year olds. Not only are you killing a 10th of the people, but you're killing a 10th of the people that have lived a life and are, are nearing death anyway. <laughs> like, even if it was like, wh why are you shaking your head? I just saved the lives of 110 year olds and you treat me like a villain. No, I'm just shaking my head at, uh, at gangland. That's it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I like how I, I like how I immediately turned myself into a hero there. Um, yeah, I mean, even if you even if the question was 10 100 year olds or 10 10 year olds, it's it's still hell. If it was 100 100 year olds or 10 10 year olds, I'm still killing the 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 centenarians. Is that a word? Centenarian? It's a valid question. I'm not saying it's not valid. I'm saying it's easy. Like, I don't even I don't even feel morally conflicted about my answer. Are we doing the federal government? OK, no politics. Um, it's still on the screen if y'all want to read it, um, but I won't be reading it. All right, uh, Kyle, I think that was the last question. Uh, do do yeah. you agree? With my assessment? Yes. Now, I want you to say out loud, I nope. would rather kill. Come nope. on. You have to stop pretending like we you're the good guy. over on time, Jared. So I can't say right now. We got to move on. <laughs> Kyle, you're, you're too... You're too enraptured with being the good guy on the podcast. You, you, you make me be the bad guy all the time. Am I a bad guy for wanting to kill 100 year old people? Yes. No. Listen, they're probably racist. I mean, just statistically <laughs> speaking, they're 100 years old. They're probably racist. Am I wrong? We're just moving on. We're just going to move on, Jared. I won't say you're wrong. Thank you, gangland. <laughs> yes and no. I mean, I said prop maybe, but I said probably. I didn't say they definitely were. I just said they probably were, which I, I, I think the math would, would, would count me correct on that. Mostly because we must disagree with you. See, see, Kyle, I'm not afraid to be the bad guy. Well, congrats. You're I'll give you a cookie. You, you like to be liked too much, Kyle. I'll give you a cookie. You like to be liked. You have a people pleaser streak in you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And and as a people pleaser, uh do do you have anything do you have anything you'd like to offer up to the people in Kyle's corner? I smooth transition. Smooth transition. Uh Former Ohio State offensive lineman Ben Chrisman heading on south to Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, 
I forget which uh which which Caleb's went where. Uh or I hate the University of Kentucky. Uh, I I have no feelings about them whatsoever. I know if I yeah, Burton to Auburn and the other guy went yep. to Iowa, correct? Yeah. Um Caleb Brown, yeah. One Brown went to Iowa, one Brown went to my guy, I, I, I want I, I, anyone who committed to Ohio State, anyone who came to Ohio State, I want the best for them. Honestly, sincerely do. But when I say I wanted the best for you, I was not talking about playing on the on the Iowa offense. That is not you feel like you could have done better. <laughs> yeah. That's your opinion, gangland. But Jared. Bet he switches the corner. He'll have a better chance of scoring that way. But Jared, more importantly, this Friday. Yeah. This Friday, Jared. Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. There that is go. not, that is, <laughs> that is, and for the record, that is not why we might not have a new episode next week. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I'm busy. One of two things are going to happen. Either Kyle and I are going to record something during the middle of this week and then release it next Monday, or we're just not going to have an episode next week. One of those, or maybe Kyle wants to do a solo. Or I can't because I am traveling for work this week. Oh yeah. We're both busy this week. So we're either going to record. <laughs> we're both busy uh, next Sunday. Um, so I don't know, Kyle, we either record something in the middle of the week and then post it, or we just maybe it, skip. Maybe, maybe it's just it, the wasteland and it's time to skip a week and, and that's it okay. It is Mother's Day too, so. That's not relevant. We've posted on, and don't, don't anyone, uh, I, I'm not afraid to be the bad guy. Mothers don't, don't take this personally. We've posted on more significant holidays before. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, Zach. Is is this your first one? You know, we don't have to have this conversation on the podcast. Um, yep. Yeah, I thought so. Um, that's tough. Sorry, buddy. Uh, let's see. Tonight's Kyle, is that it for Kyle's Corner? That's it. Yep. I was about to say, hey, everyone, go check out the T-shirt store. But um, Ohio State claimed this one. Um, so it's no longer <laughs> available. And yeah, it was Ohio State that claimed it, not Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah nintendo i'd been like okay y'all you okay 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 you got me that that's fair nintendo you got me it's ohio state that claimed it it doesn't say ohio state on it what 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 nerve they're also there were ohio state adjacent shirts they ohio state did take some shirts off of our site that I, I honestly couldn't argue with. I'm like, okay, y'all, y'all got me on that one. This one was bullshit. I might re-upload it just to fuck them. Just to say fuck them. But yeah, I, no, I they, that... they took down some of our stuff that deserved to be taken down. I'll own that. Yeah. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, brought to you by a Columbus based band called the soul monsters. Uh, the name of the song is head in the clouds. If you're watching this on YouTube, you don't get the music because of trademark stuff, just like our t-shirts. Um, Jared admitted he was wrong. N- no, I was right. I, I was purposefully skating. I was purposefully trying to nudge up against the line. And I got caught. I'm not admitting I'm wrong. I'm admitting I got caught. Soul Monsters, Head in the Clouds. Uh, YouTube, again, because of trademark stuff, you can actually play the music there. Uh, you can hear the song either by following the link in the show notes or listening to the audio version of this podcast where the song might already be playing. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the Soul Monsters. Soul Monsters.